everybody welcome back to Avo tutorials today i want to share with you something really cool that i have learned how to automate which is sending emails from google sheet so why did i learn how to do this it's because i have a friend who started doing his own personal training sessions and then he wanted to keep track and send emails to his clients but he was spending quite some time on sending them updates and how many sessions they have left so what I've done is to create a Google Sheet that he can have for every client and send out emails whenever he's done with their training session. So let me just go through with you this quick demo before I jump into the code and how do you actually do this. All right, so here there is the client's name, which is James Lynn. Then there's the phone number, there's the email address. Um, and then over here, there's a table where it says the date of when the session took place. How many sessions uh, there's left for this client any internal notes for himself um, the remarks that he would like to let his client know so at least the client will you know be able to remember and know like what they have trained on for the particular day and then this column e here is really really important because once the check mark um, is true then the email will be sent so let me just show you a quick demo so when i click true you can see that um, the timestamp is updated, meaning that the email has been sent. And when I go to the email box for this Bam Hummus Gmail, you can see that there's an email here. And when I click open it, there's an email that shows, hey, thanks for giving your best. Uh, James Lynn, which is the name, you have how many sessions left as per today, which is the exact date and time. And then see you soon. Remarks if any, conditioning, for arms, glutes, hamstrings, which is what that we have written on column D over here. So the client would know and then best regards with a sign off. So now let's jump into the code and how do you do this? Um, you can actually duplicate this current sheet that I have. I'll be sharing this in the description down below. So once you have opened up the sheet, all you have to do is duplicate it. Um, just like how I'm going to do it now. Make a copy over here, file, make a copy. And then just make a copy. So this is a copied sheet. And what you can do is to replace whatever details you need, but please do not change the cells on where it should be because you will need to do that um, on the back end of the code. And I'll show it to you why it's really important not to change it for now. Once you have copied the sheet and you can try to you know, uncheck and check this again and see whether the email is being sent or not. You will realize that it's not being sent. This is because you have not allowed the system to run it with your email. There is an authentication process that you need to do before you can run this. Okay, so let's just uncheck this. And then the next step is to go to extensions, open up app script. Okay, so app script is where the magic happens and where all the code is. So once you have duplicated the sheet, open up app script and you will see this bunch of code over here. First off, let me see if I can make this bigger. Yeah, okay. So it will start off as the function um, for create on edit trigger. So basically this function creates a trigger for any edit that is going to happen in your spreadsheet. So later on then you will specify what the trigger is, but this is a function that you need to call to the active spreadsheet. So the active spreadsheet, meaning whatever spreadsheet that's open, whatever spreadsheet that you have used to open up the app script, that is your active uh, spreadsheet. Man, okay. There's an active spreadsheet. Then you have to create a new trigger, meaning like um, a trigger on when the edit happens. All right, next up then is a function called on edit. And this is uh, letting the system know that this is to handle edit events in the spreadsheet, but also letting the system know which spreadsheet. So you have to put in the code, the sheet name. It's really important because right here, I've put sheet one, all right, over here that I've highlighted because in my sheet here, it's called sheet one. So if you happen to change the sheet name, make sure you change it in the code as well. If not, it won't be able to pick up which spreadsheet that you're referring to. Moving on. There is the extract information about the edited cell. This let function is like giving a name to the function so that you can just use the name of the function within your code below. So let range 
you are going to select the range that was edited, let row, meaning which row that you have edited, let call, meaning the column that you have edited, and then let cell value, meaning which value of the edited cell. Once you have given the names to all of the function, then you can specify where are those changes. Here, next up is to check if the edit occurred in column 5 and the value is true. This is really important because call, remember which column that has been edited, you actually have specified here above. Call equals equals 5. 5 is because it's the fifth column. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The fifth column is column E. Okay, so column E is your main trigger. Whenever I click a check mark, then the whole system, the whole workflow will happen and then you will send an email. All right, so when that is true, because when I put this check mark here, when it's checked, it is true. You can see here in the formula bar, it's true. But when I click on a cell that is unchecked, then it's false. So meaning you're telling the system if to say that, okay, um, trigger the workflow if column E is true. All right, then next is get relevant data from specific cells in the same row. So this is where you will let the system know exactly what to pick up and where to pick up. For us to send out the email, we know that we need the name, because if you look back at the email that we were sent out, we know we need the name, the number of sessions left, the exact date and time, and then even including the remarks um, that we have input in the sh form. So we're letting the system know that the name is at 4 and 2. 4 is the row, 2 is the column. And you're telling the system to get the value from row number four, column number two. Going back to our Google Sheet here. So if you see row number four here, column number two, which is column B, which is James Lin. So for example, if you change James Lin to be like on column D4, then when you send out the email, you won't have any names getting picked up because this is empty. The system will not know that it's in D4. So it's really important if you're going to change the placement of the name, make sure you change it in the code as well. Okay, next up is the sessions left. So the sessions left is being updated here, 20, 19, 18, 17, whatever, whatever. And it's on the second column and the ninth row, right? So here, we put row instead of 9 because we want it to take from the row that's being currently edited and then column 2. How does the system know which row is being currently edited? It will know based on which row that you have selected the check mark uh, to be checked. So if it's checked, so then the system will know, okay, means you're working on row number 9. If you check on this, then the system will know you're working on row number 10. Yeah. So if you put in row, then it's dynamic. If you put in row, here means it's dynamic and it will keep following which row that you have checked for the email to be sent. Then, let email. Let email meaning where is the email address that it's going to send to. So 6 and 2. Row number 6, which is here. Column number 2, which is B, here, bamhamas at gmail.com. So change up this email once again. If you change the placement of this email address in this sheet, do make sure that you change it as well in the code. Remarks, and it's on row 4 because, again, we want it to be dynamic and it's on column 4. Let date is row and 1 because, again, we want to follow dynamic which uh, row and then the date would be in column 1. Then we will tell the system that we need to get the email address of the active user. Active user meaning who is the one that's going to send out the email. We know that we are going to send out to bamhamas at gmail.com, but who's the one that's going to send, right? Who's the sender? So the sender is the person that is being active on this sheet. So for example, for me right now, is this kfkyyan at gmail.com, 
So when you open up the email, you can see that it's being sent by this person to bamhamas at gmail.com. All right. So this function here, this code here, is telling the system that, okay, this email that the sender is going to be the active user of the Google Sheet. Then get the current timestamp, which is the current date and time. Construct the email body is next. So here's where a bit of customization that you can do. Um, feel free to change up the text of how you want it to appear for any context or, or any uh, business case that you need. For example, for me was um, my body was thanks for giving your best and sweating out today and which is the name, James Lynn. So that's why I plus name plus continue the, the text. So whatever text that you have is in red over here that you can change oop, that you can change up, but you can use the names that you have um, assigned to the functions. So remember earlier on we assigned what is name, what is sessions left, where the system can grab all this information. So you can just add them in here so that it's dynamic. Okay. Once you're done with the email body, then you can send the email. To send the email, we need to use the mail app function, mail app dot send email, and send it to the email here. So again, you don't need to put in the exact email that you're going to send to because the system already knows email, they're going to get it from cell B6. Okay, and then the subject, this one is in red text here. You can actually change this up. So for me here is fitness bootcamp update, but for yours, you can just change up to whatever suits, uh, suits your needs. And then the next up is the email body. So again, email body here, I don't have to retype the whole text again. And the email body for me above here was in HTML format. So I'll put HTML body and then email body. So email body is the name that carries all of this code over here and last but not least is to update the timestamp column so if you realize there is a column over here called timestamp column f and you remember the demo earlier when i click check mark here the timestamp will appear based on when the email has been sent out successfully okay so that's um, a function that you need to add because it's on again dynamic row and then column six and which is timestamp. Now the main core of the code is done. I will go through a little bit on what this code is. It's basically setting up a trigger. Now what is a trigger? If you go to the left bar over here, you can go to triggers. You will see that there's no trigger that's being set up, meaning your code will not run. You need to set up a trigger for the code to run. So usually what we will do is to add a trigger and then change it on edit, meaning when there's an edit in the spreadsheet, then you can notify me immediately if it's any if there's any failures of the code not working when there's the trigger, then it will notify you. So you can change the notification to however frequency that you want, and then you click save and it will create. But I've saved the trouble of you doing this every time you need to duplicate the sheet and then create a trigger. You don't have to do that because the code that I have written over here is if you click run, then the trigger will automatically be created if there's none. So you can keep this part of it. You don't have to manually create a trigger. Okay, now before we test the sheet, we just have to click run. And you'll realize there's an authorization required so you need to review permissions and then you need to choose the email that you're being that you're using this google sheet on and you'll you'll see this error message don't worry you just have to click advanced and then go to send email and then click continue click allow so this is basically letting google know that you will allow it to run this code and yes, that error message looks a little bit scary, but don't worry because it's a Google product. It won't go any, you know, it, it, there's very, very low chances of it being a bug. Now, once you run it, you can see the execution started, execution completed, all is good to go. 
Now let's just test the sheet. Click this. And yay, you can see the timestamp over here, meaning that it's sent out on this date exactly at this time. So we're now going to go to our email box and check whether it's there. Yeah, so there's an email that, that came in and it says, thanks for giving that's running out. You have 20 sessions left, which is this exact date and time, and then the remarks, if any. So if you're not sure whether it, you know, it, it sent out, then you can check mark again another row and see whether it works. So yeah, to me, for me, it works. And then I can see like a new email came in. So again, here you can see that there's 19 sessions left with the exact date and time. There you go. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Again, you don't have to build all of this from scratch. You can duplicate this sheet, make a copy. Once you make a copy, go to extension, open up the app script. On the app script, make sure you click run and allow Google to use your email to run the code. Then test the sheet. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It is so cool. It saves so much time and I hope that it helps you as well in your automation journey. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Um, keep reading and keep learning. Thank you. Bye.